It's week eight in the NFL season. It's week eight. Hey, man. Now, it's that's the halfway point of the season. Kind of screws us up because some teams are, have only played six games through seven weeks because they've had bye weeks. And as you know, there's 17 regular season games. So this might be a little old school, but we're entering for some the halfway point of the season-ish. And we are absolutely entering tightening of throats, puckering of you know what. Oh. Panic buttons beginning to form. Big time red alert situations. I need NFL Films music, Mike Del Tufo, because I have a top five list for you. Yeah. I've got the top five teams entering week eight in full on red alert mode. And it starts with the first home team we're seeing this weekend. The three and four Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I am a little bit hesitant to put them on this list, not because I'm unconcerned with their level of play or results. They're still in first place. (laughs) Even if they lose on Thursday night at three and five, The Atlanta Falcons are home against the Carolina Panthers. And even if they win that game, I don't think Atlanta's running away with this thing. But they have to start showing some championship quality play. They have to show some metal after getting spanked by a team that has an interim head coach, had just traded away their best offensive player, and ran all over them. And starting neither Baker Mayfield nor Sam Darnold in P.J. Walker, and they're they're going to go with the kid. They just lost by that team by 18 points. We got to see something on Prime Video against the Ravens, and that's why they're number five on this list. Number four on this list is the other three and four team quarterbacked by a goat 12 going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame that I'm more concerned about because the Packers are in a division being led by a 5-1 and one team that's already beaten them. And Aaron Rodgers is going on our friend McAfee's show saying one out of every five snaps, 20% features a mistake. And he's also saying that players who are making these mistakes need to either hold themselves better accountable or not be allowed to play, which makes it sound like the coach is not coaching up the players who are walking around feeling like they shouldn't hold themselves accountable well it's not the the coach he's criticizing says aaron Rodgers. so does that mean he's criticizing the general manager for putting these players around him i thought that was all supposed to be copacetic but it's not no don't pay attention to the subtext just pay attention to the context which is they're making mistakes and they got to clean it up and they're three and four going into buffalo coming off a bye on Sunday Night Football Lookout. Number three on the list. This team is in full red alert mode. Full red alert mode. And this team thought they could tread enough water until their quarterback came back from an 11-game suspension. But the Browns have won only twice in the first seven weeks of the season. And they've got a home game on a Monday night with Joe Burrow red hot coming to town. And if they fall to two and six then guess what? We're talking about Watson coming back and needing to show something so they can have confidence and a head of steam going into next season. And we're having that conversation right now, and it's week eight. They got to start winning games, and they got to hold onto turf at home against a division opponent, and not just any division opponent, one in their state, one that won the division last year, and one that won the conference last year. That's full red alert mode here. And if not, does Kareem Hunt get traded the next day? Trade Mm. deadline's the day after. What do the Browns do if they fall to two and six and the trade deadline is the next day? Red alert. Number two on this list is my team that I said was going to win the division. Okay, Raiders, you're out of your bye. You're two and four. You've got maybe, and I know this is saying a lot, maybe the best running back in the NFL this year because Josh Jacobs is doing that work for this team. And you just won a game at home against the Houston Texans, and Devontae Adams is having his fun leaving the leaving the, this, the field by making sure that everybody's left the field before he enters the tunnel. Everybody's feeling good there. Well, guess what, Raiders? You're 2-4, and four, 
And if you want to make the playoffs, even as the seventh seed, you've got to start winning football games and keep it going. You're at New Orleans, at Jacksonville, home for Indianapolis, at Denver, at Seattle. Four of the next five are out of Vegas. What stays in Vegas is not the Raiders for the next four <laughs> out of the next five. You've got to win some football games and win them now. And we'll see what happens, because if not, you're out looking in and you got your new coach and who knows what happens there with an owner who might hit a red alert button and then number one on the list i don't think there's any argument about this one the team on most red alert are the denver broncos at two and five taking on jacksonville in london where many and nfl head coaches have gone to get fired there have been many head coaches who have long flights with a bye week following. And I uh, this may be unfair to Nathaniel Hackett, but it is the truth. You got a new ownership group that nobody knows what they're thinking about. Nobody knows. All we know about the new ownership group is they're immensely rich. And the guy who fronts it thinks the commissioner's name is Goodle. Other than that, we don't know how they're going to handle Goodle. potentially a team that's a two and six. And if Russ, despite his wolverine blood and saying that he's ready to go gets pounded by a very fast youthful front seven in jacksonville which is absolutely the home team of london i've seen it i've called their games there i wembley stadium is a home game for jacksonville despite how many broncos fans might show up at two and five, they've got to win this game, and we've got to see something out of Russell Wilson, and we've got to see smart play calling and smart time management. We gotta see it. Two and six for the first half of Russ's tenure in Denver going into a bye week and sitting on that. That is red alert for Broncos Nation. Let's ride.